Life in the Colonies Readings, number five, Life for African Americans. Slavery in the colonies began in Virginia with tobacco planters. From there, it spread both north and south. By the early 1700s, enslaved Africans were living in every colony. Even Benjamin Franklin owned slaves for a time. But like most people in the New England and Middle Colonies, Franklin found that hiring workers when he needed them cost less than owning slaves. In the Southern Colonies, however, slavery expanded rapidly. From Virginia to Georgia, slaves helped raise tobacco, rice, indigo, and other cash crops. The Atlantic Slave Trade Most of the slaves who were brought to the colonies came from West Africa. Year after year, slave ships filled with cloth, guns, and rum sailed from the colonies to the coast of West Africa. There, these goods were traded for Africans. The ships then returned to the Americas, carrying their human cargo. For the Africans packed onto slave ships, the ocean crossing, known as the Middle Passage, was a nightmare. According to his autobiography, Alauda Equiano was just 10 years old when he was put onto a slave ship. He never forgot the closeness of the place, which was so crowded that each had scarcely room to turn himself. Nor did he forget the shrieks of the women and groans of the dying. The terrified boy refused to eat, hoping for the last friend, death, to relieve me. Even though Equano survived the voyage, many Africans died of sickness or despair. Even so, the Atlantic slave trade was very profitable. Many colonial merchants built fortunes trading in human beings. Work without hope. The slaves' masters in America demanded that the Africans work hard. Most enslaved Africans were put to work in the fields raising crops. Others worked as nurses, carpenters, blacksmiths, dry drivers, servants, gardeners, and midwives, people who assist women giving birth. Unlike other colonists, slaves had little hope of making a better life. Their position was fixed at the bottom of colonial society. Some slaves rebelled by refusing to work or running away, but most adapted to their unhappy condition as best they could. Slowly and painfully, they began to create a new African-American way of life.